Hello and welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're in the book of Esther, Esther chapter 7, verse 1. We'll cover this seventh chapter today. Get your Bible, open it up to Esther chapter 7 if you can. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Remember, you can study all of the Bible with me as much as you want to anytime you want to for a complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse at the Bible verse by verse dot com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the Bible. Bring your Bible and a hunger for God's word to the Bible verse by verse dot com. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. So the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther the queen. Haman was humiliated in the last chapter earlier that day, having to parade Mordecai around like a national hero. And that was bad as far as Haman was concerned. But he doesn't know what bad is yet. He has tricked the king into issuing a law declaring that all Jews be killed. And that would include the king's beloved queen, Esther. And now, the king and Haman are about to learn that not only is the queen a Jew, but so is Mordecai, the one that the king desires to honor right now for saving his life in the past. So Haman's life is about to come crumbling down. Two, and the king said again to Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, what is your petition, Queen Esther? and it shall be granted you. And what is your request? And it shall be performed even to half of the kingdom. The king is in a very good mood toward his wife, which is going to be really bad news for Haman when she tells the king her request and that he has issued that decree that will kill not only her, but Mordecai and all the Jews. Three, then Esther, the queen, answered and said, If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. What in the world is this? The king doesn't know what that... He has no idea what his queen is talking about. That you would grant me my life and the life of my people? What's this all about? The king doesn't know, see, that his queen is a Jew. And he doesn't know that Haman is responsible for getting him to write a law demanding that all Jews be killed. He's about to find out, but right now he doesn't know. Verse 4, so he says, For we, or this is Esther speaking to the king, For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. The queen is saying, I wouldn't even bring this up, king. If it was just about you selling me and my people for money, I wouldn't even, bring, I wouldn't even bother you. She's suggesting that she would understand him doing that. You want to sell us? That's fine. I get it. But why have me and all the other Jews killed You're not going to get any return on that. How does that benefit you, king? So she's appealing to her husband, the king, on that basis. Then the king, Ahasuerus, answered and said to Esther, the queen, Who is he and where is he that dare presume in his heart to do so? Boy, don't you know that the color is draining from Haman's face as he's sitting and listening to this conversation between the king and the queen. The king still doesn't understand 
that this whole thing is connected to his royal command to wipe out a race of people who Haman wanted wiped out. The king has a track record of acting in haste and getting in trouble because of it, and that certainly was the case right here. Now watch this. 6. And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and queen. I'll bet you he was. Haman wasn't stupid enough to try to kill the queen, but his reckless plan to kill all Jews included her. He just didn't know it. So the king is angry, and Haman is terrified. And verse 7, the king, arising from his banquet of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden, and Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. The only one the king would even possibly listen to at this point would be the queen. If Haman tried to plead for his wife or for his life, he'd have his head chopped off so fast he wouldn't even know what hit him. So he knows his only hope is to appeal to the queen. She is Haman's only hope. <clears throat> the one who would show no mercy, Haman, is now begging for mercy for himself. 8. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine, and Haman was fallen upon the bed whereon Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. The king thought Haman was trying to molest the queen on top of everything else. And he's thinking, what nerve this guy has. He's not going to receive any mercy. He won't even have a chance to ask for it. The Bible says his face is covered. In other words, they put oh. They put a hood over his head. He's ready for hanging. And there's no time for an appeal. 9. And Har Bona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows fifty cupids high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, stands in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him thereon. Blessed are the merciful, the Bible says, for they shall receive mercy. Haman did not show any mercy, so he won't enjoy any mercy. The Bible says we reap what we sow. So on the gallows where he would have hung an innocent man, Mordecai, he will now be hung. Verse 10, so they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Haman's life was a sinful life. He wanted to be honored, but he ended up dying in disgrace. He wanted to be famous for being important, but instead he is famous for being an arrogant, self-centered person who got the punishment that he deserved. Well, problem number one is solved for the Jews. Haman is dead. And Mordecai will not be hanged. But problem number two is still there because the royal law to kill all the Jews cannot be reversed. None of the laws of the Medes and the Persians could ever be reversed. So that's a huge, that's a huge problem still hanging over the heads of the king and all the Jews, including his queen and Mordecai. They're going to have to figure out a way of backing out of that, that law um, when they can't really do that because no law can be reversed. Well, we'll stop right there. Study the whole Bible with me verse by verse at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible. If you'd like to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me and God's Word. 
And when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. We'll see you next time. I hope you can join me for chapter 8. And I hope you like this book because I'm having fun looking at the sovereignty of God. God working behind the scenes. See you next time.